Today is cut down day. NFL teams must trim their roster to 53 players. The team terminates the contracts of fullback Cliff Gross, defensive end Keevan Henry, defensive end Javon Langford, and safety kick returner Tremaine Mack. Those waived include three free agents and receiver Malcolm Johnson. Surprise, punter Daniel Pope gone. Loses out to recently signed Nick Harris. Three are placed on injured reserve. Sean Brewer, Damon Griffin, and Armija Spearman. Bengals.com writer Jeff Hobson joins me a little later to discuss the moves, but now we've got the coach on the punting situation. We had such high uh, scouting reports on, on Nick Harris, and uh, he, he has a chance in our estimation to be a top, top punter. And it, was, it wasn't anything that, that Daniel did. Daniel did a good job, and I think Daniel is an NFL punter, but we think we have a chance to get a top, top echelon NFL kicker. The Bengals and the rest of the NFL open the season one week from today. It's important for the Bengals to get off to a good start against the Patriots, or soon we'll all be hearing it's the same old Bengals. The voice of the Bengals, Brad Johansson, discusses the approaching season with quarterback John Kitna to be seen next Sunday right here on Bengals Weekly. John Kitna from right, South go, Carolina. Go, Is there a mentality that this team has to get over to figure out how to win? I don't think to figure out how to win, I don't think that's it. Everybody knows how to win. But to be willing to make the extra play, the extra effort to win, that's the thing. The attitude that says, we're going to win, that's the thing. When a blocked field goal happens and you go down by six points and still expecting to make enough plays to win, that's the thing. It's not that you don't know how to win. We know how to win. Every guy in this team has won before. And whether that's high school, college, uh, in the NFL, whatever it is. But it's about expecting to win. Then let me ask you about the press clippings. Have you read any? I haven't read one time? thing. Why? Because, uh, and I used to. I used to read them all the way up until last year. I would read things. And this year, I just decided I don't, I'm going to try not to read one thing. I, I, not just about the quarterback situation, about our football team, about any other football team, because I don't want to hear the hype about Baltimore or Tennessee. or, or any, I don't want to hear any of their hype. I didn't like the way that I responded to those things in the past because, uh, you know, if I heard, oh, well, uh, the coaches are a little down on John Kitna, even though it does, wasn't quoted, but that's what was said, that would affect me. And then so I'm going out to practice trying to, okay, I got to be perfect today instead of just playing. And how I tried it, to go out and just maintain it. Without without any of that. Has it changed you? Yeah. I, I, I was able to go to practice every day during training camp and just play. Is there a new excitement for you to step out on this field as a starting quarterback at the Cincinnati Bengals? This situation is perfect for me. You know, it, it, I mean, it's perfect. I love the head coach. I love our offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach. I'm, I'm in love with the running back that's behind me. I think we have a great offensive line and I'm super excited about our wide receivers and how much talent and and what I think they're going to be able to become. And so uh, I, I'm excited about what I see our defense has done in the preseason. Uh, they create problems for offenses. And so I'm, I think this is a perfect situation. I think God has brought me here at, at the perfect time for me and for this, for this organization. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited to go out and in my opinion, lead what I think is going to be a playoff type season. This week is going to be pretty much now focused on the Patriots. With what you know about this team, what are you dealing with? This is an opportunity for me and not a lot of people know. Lawyer Malloy, who's their free safety, we played Pop Warner together in fifth, sixth, seventh grade, eighth grade, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And then we played in high school together. And this is the first chance I get to play against him. I've never played against him in the NFL, so I'm excited about that. He's the only guy that I've been around that's wanted to win as badly as I do at every single thing that he's ever done. We used to, on, bas on the basketball court, we played the same exact position, and we would just battle every day where it almost came to blows. Uh, in baseball, we had great baseball teams playing together. In football, we were, you know, we were a pretty good football team. We never achieved greatness, but... Um, I really love the way he plays, so I'm excited for this first game to get started and go out and, and compete and, and uh, 
you know, hopefully gain bragging rights against my boy. Brad, thank you very much. Tonight you make the call. But now, Bengals.com is the toast of the NFL. And the guy who's leading the charge in Bengals.com is Jeff Hobson. He joins us here tonight. Jeff, thanks for coming in. Do you take the same mentality as when you wrote for the newspaper as you do for Bengals.com? Yes, well, thanks a lot for the kind words, Harvey. And, uh, yeah, I do. I think, it's, uh, I think that's what Mike wanted when he, uh, I think, you know, when he hired me was he was looking at And I told him I really only know one way to do it because that's all I've ever done. Can you say or write anything you want? I've never had the guys say, don't write that. So, and I've written some things that, you know, uh, probably wouldn't appear on NFL.com. I know that. And I know that because they haven't appeared on NFL.com. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's start talking tonight. Uh, Tremaine Mack, gone, let go by the team. Surprised today? A little bit, I would think, uh, uh, because, the, you know, like you were saying before, they are thin at safety. Mm. But I think when Scott Mitchell went down, you knew they had to make a move. They were going to have to go light someplace else. And I think they really liked the way uh, that, you know, Juwan Arma played. And he really helped himself in that Buffalo game mm -hmm. when Dyle Williams was hurt, Chris Carter was hurt, and actually Mack got hurt during that game. He played all the snaps. He didn't play at all uh, against the Colts on Thursday night because of his hamstring, but he was so good against mm -hmm. Buffalo, they felt like, he, you know, he's ready to play. He's converting mm -hmm. from linebacker. And I think Tremaine is, is I think they felt like uh, he never really, uh, he never really, did it safety what they wanted him to do he was never really as athletic as they thought he was going to be nick harris comes in daniel pope gone as a punter i mean they brought nick harris in just for a couple of days how do you give the man the job based on one appearance i tell you that's a tough thing to all of a sudden boom you got a new punter going in with a week to go but i think they felt like hey the best punter in the draft here he is i also think they think he might be a 10-year solution because let's face it they really do, they have really you know since lee johnson left back in 98, right. uh, as we all know, remember how that happened. He, uh, they have not really had an answer. I mean, Pope had a decent year, but he is not going to be able to kick you out of a hole. He's a 41-yard guy, and that's, and that's it. And they hope that this guy, you know, when they're backed up, can give yeah. him a 60-yarder. Scott Covington comes back, four quarterbacks now. Seems to be a problem with Scott Mitchell being injured. Yeah, I mean, all, I mean it's almost if you get an injury like that, you almost want it to know if it's going to be for the year or what. Now this is an iffy one, so you had to, uh, you, you know, you had to go with four because Achilles Smith's shoulder was mm -hmm. was tight. But he came back to practice today. He looks like he's going to be able to play for New England, uh, you know. But Mitchell won't be ready. But Mitchell looks pretty good. Now I don't know. He keeps saying, you know, less than four. The trainers keep saying at least four. Do you like Kitna back there as your starter? I think if you look, you know, people are grumbling about him, mm -hmm. you know, but he's been to the playoffs in the '90s. He's been to the playoffs in this side of the 90s, uh -huh. 1999, and uh, there's nobody in this town who has done that. And uh, yes, he does throw it to the other guy, but you know what? You got to do that when you throw it down a field. I think this guy is the West Coast version of Doug Flutie, but you never hear of him because he's on the West Coast. I mean, he's a, a, a guy who came out of nowhere in college. I mean, uh, geez, if this guy played in New York or, uh, or someplace, you'd, he'd be the rage. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I think he's kind of a gutsy guy, and he's also got an 18 and 15 career uh, one loss record. What's going to happen with Justin Smith? I tell you what, he might sit it out, Harvey. Really? I mean, he he might sit it out. Uh, Gone for the season. Uh, he might, he might. I mean, wow. it's hard, it's 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 hard to believe, but uh, they, you know, uh, both sides are dug in. The Bengals are just not going to uh, are not going to go for the uh, smallest, you know, for this for the minimum escalators. Right. And uh, this guy is saying, look, three got it, five got it, I'm at four. I ought to get it, and I think, uh, you know, I tell you what, I, I, I just don't see anything in the foreseeable future. All right, so the 53-man roster, as you see it, better than last year, would that lead you to believe a better record than last year, 4-12? and 12? I think a big thing, I think you've got to see the guy's name at the, I think the guy's name at the bottom of the roster is Dick LeBeau, mm -hmm. and I think, uh, I think uh, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, the state of mind that he's in and that the team is in is a lot different than it was last year, when I think Bruce was a little bit, as we saw, was kind of at the end of the rope. I guess we didn't know how close to the end of the rope that he was until until Baltimore. I think that's a big difference. Uh, I also think the fact they got nine guys who are 30 and older, I think that's a big thing. Two years ago, there was one guy on this team. Mm -hmm. and I, I think you have to have a little bit of age to win this thing and, I, and, and, and you, know, you know, to win. And I think that uh, the fact that they get a, I think the fact they got a new offensive scheme should help them with the talent they have. We'll see. Jeff? Always a pleasure. Harvey, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming by. Take care now. All right.